Uh. Oh, God. Okay. Um, hmm. we're live. Is what I'm hearing. Hey, is there? Actually, perfect. If, okay. If Twitch uh, Streamlabs wants to make it go live, we are. Um, it's just still loading, or <laughs> yeah, it's just sitting yeah. here forever on start video transmission. Oh, because it's waiting for the delay. Okay, never mind. Okay. So we're good? Yes, sir. We are up. Perfect. Um, um God, I have to remember to cast. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, today we're, we have App State versus Top Fraggers. Um, I don't know, man. This is going to be a pretty close game here. Because uh, specifically, I, I faced App State last week. Uh, it was App State versus One Trick. Uh, it was a very close game. It was insanely long it was a great game everyone performed well and i'm really hoping that we can see that same kind of thing here um i also remember watching the top fry game if i remember correctly uh tay was doing insane things with the Sophia. i can't remember if that was on app state or top frags i'm really new to this but i'm really hoping this becomes a very close game because both these teams are absolutely insane i had to stop myself there um but yeah it's uh, i'm really excited Alrighty, let's get yeah. the ball ready from Upstate, and we are good to go. Oh. Oh, yeah. Let's get her going. Alrighty, yeah, map one here. First map of the day, we're on Villa. Upstate starting on attack, top figures on defense. Get them to these bands. Not expecting anything too crazy for bands, but you never know. That's... Who knows well, you know, I'm I'm now. hoping. Yeah, I'm hoping for this Villa band here. We see some branching out from the typical Thatcher like Maverick band. I'm hoping to see like a Flores band here, uh, especially with on. Oh, Finca. Yeah, forgot about her. Uh, very powerful band, especially if you're gonna go into the game being on defense. There, a Finca band for the attackers is actually really, really, really powerful. Um, most likely here, gonna be seeing a Thatcher band. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to see that Flores band that I mentioned earlier. Um, on Villa specifically, I personally like to have a lot of shield play on this map. So seeing that that operator will hopefully still be up, yes. Um, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for um, the attacking app state to be able to deal with the defending shields. Um, hopefully on defense here we see a Mira or a Cade ban. If not, both those characters are extremely powerful this map, and I'm hoping that they don't become too one-sided in the way that that is. Um, if not, we could see some new strats that I haven't seen of before. Valkyrie, yeah, one of them's gonna be left up, and it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see at least. Um, usually in the rank scene of Siege, you can see those Mira and those Cade players be completely completely change around, especially on the Aviator bomb site where it can really determine how the round goes because you left that one operator up. So I'm hoping this is the Mira ban here. Yeah, the Cade is more more easily dealt with than the mirror but still nevertheless an issue a little more difficult to deal with than your typical band mm -hmm. mute which we'll see how app yeah. state deals with that on their attacking rounds here looks like we're getting that jackal out from tay see who we get everyone else um I, i'm noticing something really interesting here tay when he was playing uh his first game this the, the first week he played on the zofia and he was absolutely destroying he was doing insane he got those really good entries and it's weird for me to see that they're changing zofia over to glue rather than him because he was such a he, he completely changed how rounds work because he had that lmg and he just was able to go in and send the best nix here with the Doc shotgun. Sorry, what? Uh, that's a bit confusing. Maybe they have some sort of elaborate strat here. I have not seen that in competitive play ever. But I'm a I'm a firm watcher pro league. Um, this is very interesting. Going from the mozzie to the yeah, this is this is all around confusing. I, I I don't actually know what to expect here because like where where do I, maybe top red like it? I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah, and by and large, it does look like a ball pool, but who knows what they have hiding and I'm not seeing here. Uh, five seconds. Uh, yeah, we'll see about Doc Shock and works out. So that is definitely an interesting pick. Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and defuse it. Sorry, not yeah, we're moving. Button. Buttons are hard. So. <laughs> uh, you're getting used to it. Um, <laughs> what I am noticing here is I believe they had a hole in the 90 wall. The mute was making one there. And if they're going to be able to hold that longer angle, yeah, they're extending all the way out to Master here. They have the default holes. 
but I'm, I'm curious to see how they're going to be moving around with that um, rotate into 90. They do have a reinforcement in pocket, so maybe they'll reinforce it off late, but it's going to be interesting, especially with that dog playing aggressive here inside of the uh, Astro. If he can keep that area on lock, it should be a pretty pretty difficult hold here, for a pretty, pretty difficult take here for App State. Yeah, so far it is looking like just a default master side clear. They are coming in through Wolf already. Don't see if they get that pick on a Chewy. Sorry, I, I would go to first burst, but buttons are hurt. Next, coming over to help out with the shotgun. Big trade there from Bam, getting Nyx and table on the blue. Four before two minutes left. Looking like a good. Sorry, keep that finger in. Keep working. Um, what I master side. what I uh, am noticing here is that shotgun ended up costing Doc his life there. He was not able to take any sort of longer gun fight, and he was forced to take one. Uh, Uno getting a pick here onto the Malusi here. I'm assuming she was not. I actually don't know where that it was, but it also looks like uh, Uno is chasing out the alibi that dropped down the hatch instead of master. Uh, hopefully the jackal is there to support him, and maybe we can get like a uh, a clear on him. No, he ends up getting the pick onto the jackal there, leaving Uno to try to solo to pinch him. Chewy put. Peeking over to the uh, lower Astro here, and we have a Habana going down. Does not know about the sludge. Excellent pick up to the sludge there. Chewy peeking over to the Habana. They're backing up a bit, playing a bit more passive, and I like this from Chewy. He's playing this position really, really well. Both pushing up. I th believe Chewy knows that Bam's there. Might be the default cam, might not be. Oh, Chewy pushes up aggressively here, gets the pick. Three kills in the round here for Chewy, I believe. Excellent roam in the alibi. If I was if I was on app site there, I'm next round, hundred percent you have to clear him way more aggressively there. If you're sitting there one one and one on one on one peeking this guy, it's obviously not working. You guys don't have to be a little bit more uh conclusive with how you're gonna push him, a little more communication, I think it'll be fine. And then the final kill there comes out from the mute on to boom of app state. Really strong, really strong round coming out here from um top fraggers. Sorry about that. I'm gonna try to fix my keybinds here real quick. I'm not used to observing, so bear with me, please. They they want to pause anyway, so it's oh, they do? it's all good. Okay. Yeah. Um, tactical timeout already coming out here from App State. Interesting. Oh, he has to take skins off. I don't know. If, like, does that count for? Is that a tech uh, pause? Yeah, know. yeah. That's a, that's a tech pause. Okay. That's their pause. Oh, that's fair enough. Um, I do want to say that App State looked really, really good there coming out of the gates. They had taken a lot of map control. They got the early kill in the dock there, but Alibi completely changed the way that round was going. As I'm saying is like, when you're in Siege, it doesn't matter if it's a 1v5, 2v5, 3v5. The the lower, like that, that guy basically 1v4 there. All of his gunfights, he took really smart and he took them well, and that's why he was able to win the round. He took them one by one. They didn't exactly collapse in on him like they maybe should have, but they, overall, he just won a lot of his gunfights, and Chewy there, showing his dominance in that lower uh, kitchen area, and I'm, I'm liking that so far coming out from him. Um, I am noticing something on defense there, bring out the clash here over that dock shotgun. I think it might be the right choice, um, though I'm really curious to see how that's going to play out here on the trophy. I'm hoping that they make the holes in the master wall there into closet, because it's a very strong uh, angle. Very strong wall there. I'm hoping that they get a... They have one shield. It's pretty good. No Jaeger, I'm noticing. Um, but hopefully if the Wumai, uh, Centrix, is able to do his job there, we shouldn't see a very close round here, because they, they seem like they have all the operators, and they seem really oppressive operators. If they play it right, this is a pretty dominant round there from top fraggers, but we, we won't know. It all depends on how this round's going to go out. And if they're able to take that ground as fast as they took it last time. Yeah, one thing that I think is going to play a big factor, uh, start the game back up here, uh, is on that first round there, we saw that Sledge and Habana pinching that alibi. They need to have a little more coordination on Attackers that, I believe, because they let them get away with two big picks for free. So yep. if that state can you know, capitalize more on those pinches, I think that would be big for them. Uh, if not, they will keep letting them shoot away with big rounds like that. It might be yeah, they, they can't they have to be a bit more, a bit more uh, strong in their room clear there. Yeah, as I said, yeah, they're just solo peeking this guy and it's really causing them. Especially with that clash on the board now, it's not going to be impossible to deal with, but it will be a big factor in sending the two people up to deal with them. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping this Zofia is able to stay for stuns for that, because otherwise that could easily change around. I'm noticing something on... App state is now they have no nades. I was gonna say they only have one pair, but now they have none. Switching that um, Yana out for the Osa, no nades on the side of App state. That could, that's gonna 
be terrible to try to deal with the clash there. I'm I'm hoping they were able to drone something out and they've spotted a weakness of some sort. But if they haven't droned that clash out, they may have just thrown them around there because they need those stuns. They have to rely on the stuns so much more greatly now that they don't have nades. This is very interesting. And they're also going for a full aviator overtake, which is really smart. It's a really strong take. I see a ban there holding a nice angle onto the uh, 90 window. Um, Chewy, I think he's swinging it. I'm not sure. I don't know if they know that Glue is top main. Ends up getting a lot of damage on the Chewy. Chewy backs up. Clash playing aggressively top red here, going into Aviator, I believe. Playing a bit more aggressive there, trying to get a pick. Or at least information. Big, big pick there from Zuno. They're already have about full 80 and 90 control here, so it, it, at this point, it's just picking those fights. It, it'll yeah, be within a minute. Not to take dumb fights. Mm -hmm. Good pick. From Another pick. From Titan. That clock is down really, That is big. Um, interesting choice here to decide to on it on shield. Interesting. Um, I am noticing here that it's now just a 1v5 on the site here with Chewy. I'm assuming that. Oh, wait, one before. Tay was underneath. Got they got the kill on him. Very nicely done there by the Rooney. Has to go over a flank of red here. Trying to see if you can get a pick here. Doesn't not. Oh, the Nomad seems to know about it. Ends up losing the round for uh, uh, Top Fraggers there. Uh, really well, really, really good take there from App State. They were able to take that side of the map within a minute, which is insane. The Clash on the on shields for some reason ends up losing their life. And I think that was part of the reason why they were able to take that so predominantly is that there was no more oppression from that Clash. They were able to just. Kind of get away with what they're doing and i think they're going to continue to do that they, yeah they're bringing the same line up here um and i i don't think they have to change anything about it i was talking earlier and i was like they have to rely so much on those nades but you don't have to rely on the nades the clash decides to pull out her gun so yeah switching off the, the clash there onto the mozzie i think might be a better choice if you want to play those aggressive gunfights um nyx is a very good player very gifted player in the gun skill and i'm really hoping he can show that Defender and bring that to the table here and i think that um batter. top fragger's kind of um need to deal with that and need to kind of adapt to what obviously is changing in the round and they were able to take uh offside offside control so they <laughs> into that round that they just had nothing to stand on other than their bodies in sight it looks like they will be extending over the AV this time around but we'll see let's see if she's enough to slow down. i i noticed a significant lack of utility on that side of the map and i think that also contributed to the, how fast they lost uh, their men. I think remaining. that uh, on the side of top fraggers, I don't believe they were set up properly. Five I, don't, I don't know if properly is the right word. I don't think they were in the right positions that they should have been. I doubt that they were supposed to be down to the library and no one in aviator side. Um, and they were just let them take that. Like right now, we're seeing all this set up on the side of the map, which I'm really liking. They're able to adapt and kind of change to what they're doing. Um, hopefully no one throws away the life that early this round. They should be careful with that Jackal. Again, no nades. So they can play kind of aggressive on these doorways without the worry of getting killed. And I'm also liking the fact that they, they're not bringing a Jaeger because they know there's no nades. They have six claymores on the side of App State. They really do want to get jumped on, jumped out on, flanked, any of that stuff. They know that that's a huge issue with top frags, and that's how they're really, really aggressive, especially Nyx here, playing aggressive on this door. Um, they can just deal with that. Uh, they can take away the round here. They understand the Muse top main now. Hopefully that Jackal is able to sneak up on them when they decide to push it from main here and kind of clear it out. Um, Nyx here, still playing aggressive on that AV door. Oh, a little bit of damage chipped away onto Uno. Yeah. Uh, putting down the main stairs, hopefully not getting too aggressive and letting them into the study. No, nope. although they are now in study. I believe that was a C4 coming up from the mute there underneath. And Nyx getting a nice kill. I believe it might have been through the wall. Double kill from Nyx there. Plays aggressive onto the AV door. Hopefully going to swing this Nomad again. And is able to get the down. Insane there. Now it's Tay versus Nyx here on this aviator side. Oh, Chewy come in to kind of help the take here. Ooh, Nyx. Ends up missing that kill. It's okay. Gets a nice some damage onto Tay there. Swinging a bit too aggressively, in my opinion. 4v1 versus Tay here. He knows it. He knows they're playing really aggressive here. He's trying to play passive. Hopefully get some picks here. Nice pre fire is going up. The mute sneaking up close to the doorway. I'm not sure he knows about it. Oh. I wasn't able to get the kill there, but Tay still on this balcony. About 60 HP. Playing it rather passively, which is fine. I think it's really smart that he's doing this. Trying to work a pick. If you can pick two people off here, he has a chance of winning the round. And that just relies on the mistakes of these two players, the Mute and the Mozzie. Again, Mute here playing a lot aggressive, but he ends up getting the kill onto the Jackal and winning the round for top breakers. 
Those early round picks coming out from Curtis on the Mozzie there, Knicks, I believe, those were huge in shutting down that take. So once you have those two bodies down, that 3v5, that is a very hard area of the map to take when you're down those two bodies. So it's a big round from, from Mozzie. Uh, it's great extension on that uh, st study side hold, and it is what they needed to shut down that, or to secure that uh, statue site. Yeah. Um, I am noticing something very interesting here. Chewy picking the Cavera. He's been so dominant, so oppressive on this alibi. I'm really curious as to why he's switching to the Cavera. That shield, that bailiff, uh, even the impacts on alibi are so useful. Even we saw in the first round there, he dropped down the Atta Catch, not the Atta Catch, the Master Hatch, and he was able to sneak away from certain death there. Um, and I don't know if the switch to the Cavera was the right play. I don't know. It, in my opinion, in comp, uh, Kvera doesn't really have a place there, but she is hiding in the basement. If they miss Joner, if they somehow manage to completely avoid her, he, she can possibly get a really nice flank out. Um, it all relies on that Noma being able to place her air jab down. If she forgets to place an air jab, if she misplaces an air jab, um, the round could easily go to top regis here because of that Kvera. But they need to be able to drone her. That's all I'm saying is that if she can avoid all the drones, it could be a fantastic play, but risking... Risking that usefulness of that shield and alibi and the bailiff, it just seems like a, a lot more risk and the reward factor. Um, and it, it, it could mark disaster here for uh, Top Rags. Uh, staying vigilant on those flank drones will be big in this room. Because even mm -hmm. if you get one to arrow off, that's a big pick. And Uno is out here getting an Frag early on Nick. Seppuku answers back with a pick on Glue. Looks like it's a, they're doing a sort of a split take. Yeah, nice. Sorry, I'm not seeing everybody here. Yeah, seems to be a bit more of a spread out take than what we're used to, especially with how uh, App State decides to attack. It's usually quite one-sided in the way they attack, but this completely really pushed. Aggressive on that. Yeah, I, I think that they now know that there's a cab there, passed by aggressive, and he gets killed. This is what I'm saying is like the risk to reward ratio is just not there, and we now lost a shield. You seem to be a lot more down than you could have been if you had just run the alibi. Four v two here coming out on the side of App State so far. Uh, if they can try to push together, not to get too aggressive here. This one, worry about Uno if he does doesn't have a droner. If he's pushing this by himself, he could easily make this a 3v2 and a lot harder for uh, App State to pull it with the round. Again, right there, he gets a little too aggressive. He jumps over um, and is able to catch that sludge a little bit off guard. Now it's a 3v2. It's a lot more likely that Top Rags can get away with this round, especially with that C4 inside of the mute. And with my, with a renewable utility, it's really, really powerful. Um, the, the only thing is here, if they can somehow collapse on site before Muse get back, but he's already up main, this is going to be a really hard round here for Top Rags. Is that what I'm saying? A 2v2 now. Um, completely clear. Nice C4 throw. Might get a bit aggressive here. Again, gets, gets another kill there. 1v1 now. Very interesting here. But the Wamai is on site. This is, this, if Top Frag wins this, they've let it slip from their fingers. App State has completely let this slip from their fingers. And it's not necessarily their fault. But those little solo pushes could have cost them. Bagged them up for a little bit of damage there, not enough to get secure the kill. A bomb has been located. I'm gonna push in there, and the end. Uh, top frags end up winning the round. So I'm saying is you need to be a little bit more passive on these roam clears. After you get all these picks and it's a four v two, you guys kind of need to regroup, recenter, and kind of rethink your plan because right there we saw it just now. You got a little bit too aggressive on your roam clear, kind of solo clearing stuff when you don't really need to. You could have waited for a drone, even though those mute jammers are very, very like oppressive and they're everywhere. I understand that, um, especially with those mozzie uh, pests as well. You can still kind of buddy up system and able to clear these people out because they may not have known that that mute was there necessarily. But you, you need to be able to drone that. You need to be able to throw a drone, have an idea where people are, and it really costs them there pushing them solo. What I am liking here is they're bringing the pulse. They're going kitchen here, really, really nice. If Nyx can get a proper hold going upstairs, which I'm assuming he's doing, he's kind of the guy that plays off site. Um, if you can get a nice second floor, I mean, with Chewy, it's going to be really easy there for the pulse to get some free C4 kills. Getting some tests set up top floor, it will seem the area to hold that down hard. Have located a bomb. Um, so far, it's looking like just a ruin side, ruin side cake, so map study over. From uh, App State here. Sorry, they are spawning spawns up there. Um, what I am liking here on the side of App State is I think they're realizing that the uh, defending team top right here are not bringing Gagger, and they're bringing now Zofia Sludge. Oh, not 
I was gonna say, and Yana, they're bringing a set of nades now, which I really like, because they kind of understand that they're not really oppressed with that, and they can kind of get away with it. Uno DCs, but since the round already started, I believe we play it out, if I'm not wrong. That is the rule as well. Um, yeah. No and that's their nades on. At the moment, yeah, that yeah. is also a bit devastating blow with that being sledge as well, so your vertical play is severely limited at that point. So at this, also, realistically, now you only have the two impacts from Zofia, but that's also your only gadget, our bulletproof gadget denial. So, see, be interesting to see how they take it. Looks like they are st starting from study over. I do not know if they notice Nick's hiding here in this little cubby. So, uh, I don't think they do. Attackers have located a bomb. This might be a big play for Nyx, bringing it down to a 5v3 or possibly even a 4v4 for App State. We are now predicting. Be a big engagement here, regardless of how it goes. Um, what I am noticing here is that they are not bringing breaching chargers on either the Zofia or the IQ. So as you said earlier, that sludge being dead completely changes how they have to push, push this. And I, I don't believe they joined up Nyx. I don't even know if they're going to be pushing that balcony. They, nope. they missed them completely. Oh, and then Nyx shoots him in the back. able to capitalize. It's, the drone work needs to be a bit more thorough on the side of App State. We can't let it happen. I know it's a 4v5 in that, but we still need people to get those corners, those little rack corners that top frag is going to continue to exploit if they do not counter them. And a nice kill onto the Y there from the Zofia. This is how they have to play this round. They have not really any vertical here. They have to play really aggressive, have to win their gunfights. And that's 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 great for the mute there. Unfortunately, that angle there with the mute is extremely hard to lose, especially when you're doing up there with the Chewy. Um, 2v1 here on the side of top frags. K kind of all by himself. He does not have much utility left. One drone, both claymores, and, I, and I'm and i assuming I can cuss. Cause I believe I saw him use both of his impacts there. He's gonna grab bomb here and try to make a play. Although I see it unlikely for App State to win this. If anyone can on the side of App State is Tay. He is fantastic with that LMG in his hands. He is one of the most gifted players that I've seen in a very long time. Um, Going for the drone there. Yeah, the drone that I did call it earlier. He's I'm assuming he's just setting it for a flank cam. This is where those claymores can kind of bite you, because if he didn't have those claymores, he could do any sort of vertical play right now, but he has to just take the gunfights. Uh unfortunately with Pulse, not a lot of damage coming up from him because you know that gun does like 28, 32, I don't know. Very like softening gun. He can't get away with it, especially with that LMG. But that mozzie might be an issue. Yeah, it's 20 seconds left. He still has 80 rounds in that LMG of his. It will be a close round here, regardless of how this is going to be. This is starting with a little edge on it. Not if it's here, but Chewie comes in for the swing. Good crossfire on Sophia. Alfred just takes the round. Yeah. Um, I am going to say something really quickly here. Uh, top Fraggers, at least on the side of Chewie and um, the Pulse, I don't actually. I think it might have been Sep. Um, they play that really, really well, really passive there. The Pulse got a little antsy, as you did say, but he was not. He didn't get so antsy that threw away his life. He was able to kind of conserve it a bit. Um, what I am noticing again. Oh, wait, no, they brought it back. They brought back the nades. I'm, I'm liking that. If they can just keep the nades in their possession and they don't decide to switch off and go with six or four claymores, I think it'll go a lot better for them. Because in a lot of these situations, I believe that without that Jaeger, they should be able to exploit some of these nades, but they're not really doing it because they're not bringing them. And then one round that they did bring them, he happened to DC. So Defenders if they can get a structured attack here and kind of, attackers. I don't want to say rely, but like expo exploit those nades, it could go very differently here. App State's been doing really well on formulating the attacks, but their drone works a little lackluster. And I'm thinking that the more this goes on, they're going to learn from their mistakes, hopefully catch those people that are hiding in those rat spots, and they can't let that happen again because they're already down 1-4 on a map like Villa, which in my opinion is a little bit more attacker side than defender side, but a 3-3 three, three half is recommended. Um, yeah, I am not, liking... What's that? Miss, that missed drone on uh, Nyx early, early round, last round there, that was a big in the round because that's the difference mm -hmm. between 3v5 and 4v4 four when, when you're already remaining. a man down, that one body is all the difference in the world. Attackers Especially when you look primary bomb flank and watch it. like the Nomad. Luckily for uh, App State, they weren't roaming too heavily. But even then, it's it's, it's still you got you got to have those drones on point. Mm -hmm. Um, especially in that four v five, as you did say, you have to be so thorough. And I can I can understand that nerves kind of get to you, especially in a four v five when you have something unfortunate as a DC happening. Nerves can kind of get to you, and that's completely understandable. I'm hoping that they are able to solve that issue that they were having with a little bit of misdroning 
And if they can just fix up this round, avoid those meat jammers, and kind of get a really good drone work done here, uh, I can most likely save the round. Oh. Each other out. A big pick all the way from Master Window onto that study balcony. Uh, not something you see very often. No, not something you do see very often, but if you can capitalize on it, go for it. It's, it really mm. starts to get the heads of always having to watch that, you know. What I uh, was noticing was I was criticizing the Claymores. I was kind of. I was kind of being like, hey, you guys can use something more useful, but that Claymore ended up getting the kill on the false there. Oh, you getting a little... Get, starting to get aggressive on that. Bam's taking a pick to even it out at 3v3. Um, I'm not sure what the kind of attack strategy here is here, because they, in my opinion, they seem really stretched out, uh, stretched out. I think Bam is actually rotating over here, and they're leaving uh, the Nomad over there by himself. Gets aggressive. I don't think Mute, Mute kind of threw away his life there. There's no really need to swing that. And I a think that may have just located. tossed around right away for top frags. What I am noticing is I think, no, Echo has no more cams. No utility on the side of the Echo. He can just get as aggressive as he wants. Although that 3v2, along with all the air jabs uh, and both uh, talent shields, this could be a bit hard for uh, top fraggers to kind of claw back here. Yeah, with all the utility that's the top stays us. It'll build down for to top fraggers, their, their discipline oh? and their ability to play. Looks like they are both. My brings it to a one v one. Big two, big double kill from Nick. Third finish out the round. He is absolutely insane on these. If you if you uh, give him the ability to go frag out and you let him like get in these really rack corners like the master, I don't think they actually knew he was there until it was too late. If you allow him to get into these kind of places, he'll exploit it to its it, it to its capacity. And we just saw that right there. They didn't really understand that he was there. They didn't really decide to go for him. So he was able to get a pretty free kill on the Sophia and then just swung again. And he didn't really get punished for it, especially when you have that, I believe, 51 bullets in that PDW. Uh, you kind of just let him get away with that. And that's not really something you want to be seeing here if you're App State, due to the fact that it already is 1-5 uh, in, the, in the half there, in the final bit of the half there. Now, App State going into defense here. Hopefully that I can switch up a bit Defenders of what they're doing. Hopefully understand how um, Top Frags is playing. Although we are seeing a blitz align on the side of Top Fraggers, and I'm hoping that they go for a rush here. I'd really like to see that. And I want to see how App State defends against it, because their main issue was how ratty uh, Top Fraggers was when they were on attack, when App State was on attack here. And if they're just kind of getting up in their face, I want to see if uh, App State can kind of handle that. Because what they've shown is that they can handle that. It's the slower play style that's really they're struggling with. Yeah, and it, it is looking like uh, for this round it'll be a uh, master side take. Top raggers here, they aren't extending very hard into that statue side, so if they are able to take that control early, that might Attackers be Attackers must locate and defuse the bomb. They are just throwing bodies with no utility. Uno's trying to get a cheeky little pick off here. See if it pans out. He understands that they're going to be re replying up to the balcony, which is really good. They kind of need that early pick due to the fact that it is 1-5. They're rotating completely over. I believe they're going to be going for rush here now that they've drained everything out. They understand there's not a lot of people on the site for uh, App State here. And they may be able to exploit that, especially with the blitz. No, they're in basement here. Oh, they're going to go up for a top red push here. Top red uh, rush here. Three of them. Chewy, uh, Sep, and uh, Centrix. Going up the red stairs here, hopefully going to get a lot of action here. I don't know if Uno knows it. Uno has no idea what the lion's scan is to stand still. If they're able to get inside here without that Jaeger doing too much work, they can win this round. But I think the Jaeger on Bam here has kind of stopped their rush in their tracks. Although, is able to push in there, the, the sledge. The evening and out, not evening now, 4v2 here on the side of App State. Kind of getting all the picks that they need. Uh, 3v2. I don't know if they know that Uno's there. I understand that Uno's there, but he still loses the gunfight. 2v1 here on the side of App State. They got the better positions, the uh, Zofia of Nyx here, playing instead of study. It's all slowed down now, and they realize, hey, we got a 50 HP guy in study, and it doesn't look very uh, happy for, uh, happy? Um, when, I don't know what the word is. Um, it doesn't look very likely that they're going to win out the round here. Only thing that I can see him doing here is maybe taking a one onto Boom here. Him playing instead of games here. Although he does shoot and kind of gives away his position. Although that would have been a free kill. If he is... Oh, no. Recognizes it. Closes out the round. Boom here. Excellent uh, spatial awareness there. He understands there was some there. Although, I believe as if he actually might have a shot first, so that might have just been sound. Although, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with spatial awareness, because I want to give him where props is due. He did a really good job there, kind of stopping the flank. Jaeger, especially. 
realizing where they were pushing up and got that early engagement onto the blitz, I believe. And if they were able to leave that blitz up for a little longer, I feel like that round was easily top rags. And that blitz kill kind of swayed it in the side of App State. Um, it didn't really matter how many times they were able to trade out frags. If you're rushing into site like that, there's you have to be quick with it. And if you're that slow, we saw the Aruni was able to push it behind and kind of distracted the sludge, I believe, from the guy in sight. And it kind of just ended up in App State's flavor, which it kind of needed to. Uh, they needed that round. Um, uh, need when you're when you're playing in this kind of game and you can. lose a lot of rounds in a row, it can be really mentally draining. And having that round where, honestly, they deserve to win it, it can kind of bring back the morals. And I'm hopefully going to see App State take a couple more rounds here on defense because they're a really good defending team. Um, they just need to play it right, calm down, and kind of uh, be thorough with what they want to do. Yeah, I'm quite surprised we didn't see a tactical timeout get uh, called from App State on their defense or their attack rounds there because obviously something wasn't working out. But yeah, as you were saying, that one round win on defense, that's big in switching the momentum up. Because the difference between six, one, and five, two, that's one round away. So, so yeah. It's really big Five momentum switching round for them, so we'll see if they're able to capitalize on that or if top raiders are able Attackers to are moving out. out to locate a bomb and defuse it. Yeah, like I'm, I'm noticing. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, it's all good. Um, what I'm noticing here is that there's no longer Attackers this blitz, there's no longer that line. They're bringing more down to earth line up here on the side of top fraggers and they're bringing nades i want to say that two sets of nades on the side of top frags which i think is fantastic especially with no Wamai and no jaeger on app state i'm really curious to see how this is gonna go they're gonna open up the window and hopefully go for a quick swing here on the zafia or she's gonna come up and shield the window yes this is gonna be might be really big here oh no boom was able to just just get out of the way that's really unfortunate that could have been a really easy kill there for the zafia but that's oh c4 doesn't oh she was just short of the window that's really unfortunate um still in the even playing field here that about oh, 40 hp taken away from the zofia but i don't think that's gonna matter much with that lmg the lmg can make any gunfight in their favor it's it's a really really powerful gun and especially in the hands of someone that's really competent with it it can be absolutely devastational yeah and it, it's um, gonna boil down here i think to how well apps to discipline themselves and smart gunfights walking in a big double for cable already early in the round. That is big for them. Gets the Thunderbird as well. Four Not one. Too good for him. Flawless round from Matt. Or from Top Fraggers there. Just a big round there. Just charging right in. No holds barred. I want to say right there, that's what I was saying with the LMG. If you're competent with a gun, that gun has no recoil, and you just gotta you just gotta shoot. That's all you gotta do, and you'll, you'll get a nice frag there. Right there, I wanna say something. It was not that App State was inherently worse. They just let Ayana get in, and the kind of line of defense that they had was completely destroyed. All that momentum that they thought they got from that one round, the one round that I thought was so critical for them being able to pull some rounds back here, was completely shattered there. Uh, flawless round can completely break a team's mental. And with a team like App State, especially already being down 2 6, this could mark the end for them. And I'm seeing even Nyx here bringing up the Amaru. Probably gonna go for a rush, Defenders maybe through uh, Astro Window. I'm attackers. thinking. Uh, Nyx is kind of a uh, ballsy guy. He likes to just push through things, and if it works, it's it's amazing to watch. But if it doesn't work, it could really shift the momentum back in App State's hands. It really, it really depends. Yeah, it's definitely uh, not not too much of a traditional lineup we're seeing from the top players right now with both the Amaru and the Glaz. No hard breach as well. So we'll see how it pans out. They do always have that uh, attack and repick if they want to switch it up. But it could be an interesting round to say the least. Top players are able to keep yeah, seconds left before three points on the day. In a good position going forwards here. Five seconds yeah. left. No, App State's able to walk back. Well then we'll see how she goes. But Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and defuse it. Definitely looking like a top right sided match. Yeah. I, I was going to say something right now is the reason that round was able to go down so quickly was they had nothing to deny the nade. And that nade destroyed the shield, I think, within like 10 seconds of them being on the master balcony. And now that they brought both sets of nade denials. Oh? Oh, no, a bug happens. What's happened here? Okay, maybe it was God's telling him to not do it. Maybe they already knew. Bomb located by now this attackers. is this is just that may have just won the round for top rank. <laughs> um, what I am noticing here is they're doing kind of a ooh Zofia taking almost all of her HP, but ends up getting the kill on the day again. Just shooting. There's not really any strategy to playing the Zofia LMG. It's just bang 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 bang. That's the end of it. Yeah, 
Um, another. Good. They're already working up into that off-site control as well. They've pushed App State fully back into site. All three players left. Sorry, two players now. Bam is in gear and smoking bathrooms. The Sophie is in a good spot to cut off both Attackers of those. Attackers have recovered their diffuser. Realistically, they they would be able to take Astro control with no issue. Now. It looks like Sledge will be doing that. The thing is, that Sophia is such low HP that that smoke grenade could easily win them round. Not win the round, but at least get them off that position. But the nade might kill him, and yeah, it's the end of the round. End of the game. God, Top Frags played that really, really well. And I don't even, I don't know if that last round was like a BM towards App State with the glass. But overall, they played that really structured, really well. I don't think there was a single missed drone on the side of Top Fraggers, not because there wasn't a lack of trying, but they didn't really go for anywhere but sight. When they attacked, they went sight, sight each time. And they kind of just got overwhelmed. And that's kind of it. I don't really understand what the issue. Oh, yeah, the only thing I can really say was on their attacks, a couple missed drones. But other than that, not much. Well, yeah, it's they they just, you know, walked into that game thinking they, they knew they were going to win. And they top fraggers did come out on top. They they were clearly dominant there. They had. They were winning all those gunfights. They were able to capitalize on those missed drones. They're, even their uh, one defensive round they dropped, they quickly adjusted the round after and took took the round win. So it's very very good showing from top braggers there. And, like, I'm not going to say that there was any lack of trying on this side of App State because I know they're a fantastic team. Like, they are... They were, they're really gifted gun skill-wise, and we saw today that they... They weren't really losing engagements necessarily. Most of the time they were getting surprised. Like when Nyx was hiding in that corner or during their trophy setup when the Yana just kind of walked in because no one was watching that angle. They're not necessarily losing their gunfights. They just were getting surprised. Their awareness was a little off today. And I think that was, it's just been a bad day for App State. I think this is no, at no representation of how it should, how, not how it should, but how they play. They are fantastic players. And I want to say on both sides, they played really well. A couple more mistakes coming up from App State than Top Fraggers, and I think that just kind of decided the game. Yeah, it's it's definitely just a game of capitalizing on mistakes and minimizing what you allow to give, and Top Fraggers just did a better job capitalizing. That That's really what it boiled down to. So, Yeah, just fantastic showing from each team. I want to say that I think next week App State will... Oh, sorry, there's a week break. Uh, two weeks from now, I think App State will come in a lot stronger off of this game. I think this is going to be taken as a massive learning experience. Maybe a little bit more time spent on learning how, not learning how to, but adapting how they're droning. I think that could be a massive cha game changer in the way App State plays. Um, I think that they, honestly, a little bit underprepared. I don't know if that's really the right wording there, but I feel like a little bit more time to practice, a little bit more time to adapt to kind of things that top frags were kind of throwing at them could make this team 10 times better and that's not saying they're bad in the first place well yeah in app state last week they they lost 7-8 to one trick which one trick by no means is a bad team they they're very strong so it's it's a bit surprising that uh well, sorry top fraggers was able to take that game so dominantly so i was expecting a much closer round count around that 7-5 you know even overtime possibly so it's mm -hmm. a very strong showing from top fraggers yeah, I, uh, I, that's, that's what I was going into this thinking. Like I, when I was facing them, like they were insanely strong. They were, their gun skill is absolutely insane. And I, I went into that game, not really knowing what to expect. And they kind of put us in check that game. It was like a, it was like a eye opener that like, they're going to work just as hard as us. So we have to work harder. And I think that this was a fluke week for App State. I don't think that the two I think it was a two seven, two six. I don't, I don't know, two seven. Um, score line. It doesn't reflect them as a team, and I think that it was just a bad week for them. And that the more they are able to kind of fix the small issues that they had, uh, the better this team will be, tremendously. Yeah, for sure. It's you know not every game you're gonna be on on you know mm -hmm. point. You you are gonna have those off days, and I think that's what what happened with App State because you know based on last week as well as you know previous times i've either played against them or seen them play they're they are a strong team it's just they weren't all there today which you know it's nope. it's gonna happen every now and then but hopefully they'll this week break for the charlotte major they'll be able to you know 
see what went wrong, fix it up, and come back for week three even stronger. And yeah, it's quite a shocking result on, on that because both either of these teams are bad teams for sure. It's just I expected a much, much closer game. Which yeah, oh, I don't man. know if it was because Top Frags came in this with such a unbridled aggression. Um, or it was just uh, a little flu from App State. It, it can go either way because I'm not going to say in any way, shape, or form that Top Frags isn't a fantastic team because uh, we just saw today a 7 2 split. Oh, not 7 2. 7 2 score line for Top Fraggers is that e even if that was a normal game, two teams that I don't even know, you can tell that they came into this thinking, hey, we're going to win this. We want to win this. We have to win this. And they came in like, a, like an absolute train, just driving through anything App State threw at them. And I want to say that they weren't even pushing the other side of the map. Every attacking round that Top Frags had, they just plowed through. They just plowed through. And most of the time it went well. That's that's what insane to me that they just they spearheaded every attacking round and it went well. Not so. Yeah, and unless you're, you know, ready for that aggressive play, it is very hard to, you know, contest if you just have, you know, an LMG dumping its hundred rounds at you. It's it's very hard to take that gunfight solo, which, you know, it boils down to a lot of communication there, which I don't know what App State's comms were like today, but it seemed like it was not there, especially with that pinch on that first round, as I was saying on that, uh, whoever was playing Alibi down in Kitchen Dining, how they, they didn't exactly pinch it together. They both sort of threw, they, they gave uh, the Alibi ones, and I feel like that was a bit of a preview of what happened for the rest of the game. They, they weren't you know, exactly playing off each other the greatest, uh, which I, and that tall Fragers was just able to capitalize on that with that aggressive play in those hundred rounds. It's, it's very hard it's, to contest that in a 1v1. It's, mm -hmm. so. um, I do want to say that, like, again, what you just said was those really small mistakes, that little missed call that they didn't give out, that little bit of something, each round kind of cost them. And I want to say Top Frag being able to exploit these things was absolutely is a beautiful thing to watch. Um, and they played a fantastic game of Siege today. Yeah, they did. Both both teams played well. However, Top Frag was just that 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 bit better and were able to capitalize on those mistakes that much better. So it's hey, a good hey, showing hey, quick, for both teams. Quick though. interruption, quick interruption. You want to interview? Um I don't know. Uh, sure, sure. <laughs> uh, did you happen to screenshot? Yes, uh, I did. I perfect. made sure to grab a screenshot because I am intelligent and remembered this thing. <laughs> You're cracked. Oh. Hello. Hello, sir. Um, fantastic game of siege. Congratulations. Thank you. I want to say, like, you you guys were able to, like, I want I want to ask you something really quickly. What was the what what were the comms like? Um, it was mainly us screaming at uh, each other to not do stupid things, but we uh, did stupid things anyways. So, that's no, no, that's fantastic. <laughs> um, um we were, I don't know. It was just a very a very fun environment. I want to ask you, what was the glass pick looking like? Why, why, why? Um, Chewie didn't listen to us telling him not to be an idiot. Fair enough. Um, I I also wanted to kind of ask you something. Was the uh, was the doc shot kind of misplay or was that fully on purpose? No, no we had a, a warm up scrim earlier, and Nix was running around the doc shotgun and said, "I'm going to play doc shotgun first round, no matter what." Um, I don't think he killed anybody, so. No, he didn't. He he got killed because he had the shotgun. Yeah. Um, uh, but I was just wondering because. <laughs> um, I don't know. You guys played a fantastic game of Siege today. Um, it, even if you're saying like you were kind of messing around a bit, you guys were able to capitalize on everything. I don't know if it was on purpose, or if it was just happenstance. But you guys played a fantastic game of Siege. I want to say that even yourself, you went twelve and six. Like that is a great score line, especially on a team versus like App State. Like that's a that's an accomplishment. Um, Thank you. Um, I do want to say that Chewie's roam with the alibi, keep him on that, and you'll win a lot of games. Like that was he played it really really well. He took a lot of great ones. Fantastic player, and that that alibi seems to suit him very well. 
Um, unfortunately, Chewie's a sub, and um, yeah. that is devastational. That I'm I'm actually really disappointed now. Here, <laughs> God, get him on the main roster. Goddamn, he played that fantastically. Um, I I do want to say I don't know if it was like you guys seem to play a really aggressive game of siege. That's how I, that's how we were able to we cast were, it. It was we were, super aggressive. We were comfortable taking our fights, uh, so we we had this mouse in our hand that we can left click with, and we we did that. So. Yeah, I, I noticed a lot of a lot of swinging and left clicking. It was yeah, we, insane yeah, to watch. We saw a lot of gaps. So we kind of just like walked in. Sometimes there wasn't really a lot stopping us. Yeah, I, I believe it was thing. you on the trophy site that just walked in the main door. Yeah, we we I heard that there was um no ADSs on the brick store, so I kind of naded it, and I was like, all right, well, there's no Malusi anymore. It's a guy triple and a guy on stat. I walked in, got the angle on the guy triple. Castle swung, didn't know I was in. Really, or maybe he did. I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. Um, killed him, and then just kind of just walked in. So, yeah, they they looked so a little bit confused there. It's a lot of that for the entire game. Yeah, yeah and I, I feel like one thing what? we were saying here is that you guys were able to capitalize on a lot of those mistakes that uh, App State was yeah. making. So, for example, um, I believe it was your lap or that round of the, your kitchen hold, where Nyx just got completely misdrowned and he was able to get that kill like it's just small things like that that i believe gave you the guys that win because you, you were just able to capitalize on those mistakes a lot better yeah for our, for our defense we were just mainly just saying hey nix go kill or hey chewy go kill um and they ran around and um unfortunately chewy died because he sucks um but and sometimes i had to save him uh there was like that that, that kitchen round where he was like stuck in the corner and the iq was I had a bullet with Chewie's name on it, and I had to save him like a, a child. So That's fair. Um, I don't want to say I think the only thing that you could kind of take away from that, because like, I, I don't know really what... I didn't notice anything that you guys did inherently wrong, other than a couple things like them not listening to you, and that's just that's how it works. Like so Every team has that kind of dysfunctional moment. And... No, we were entirely trolling that one. Yeah, And you guys took it away 2-7, which is fantastic. Um... Thank you very much for being able to stop by. It was, it was really, really nice hearing your side of the story. No um, yeah. Hope to see you guys another cast another game of ours sometime this season. GG, well played. Adios. Games tonight. Adios. Do you not unmute your stream? Don't mute your stream. Let's try and do it out here. Uh, thank yeah. you for tuning in today. Uh, that is all for Top Fraggers vs. App State. Our next match will be uh, Inferno versus No Limits in about 30 minutes, so we'll catch you then. Have a good one.